I'm talking today to UK coach, mentor and author Jessica McGregor Johnson. Hi Jessica, thank you so much for letting me interview you today for Aspen OTV's International Library of Interviews with Experts. Hi Joanne, lovely to be with you today. Lovely to be talking to you too, Jessica. Jessica, today we're going to be having a discussion about realizing your potential, but when fear and rules get in the way. So let's start with so many people want to change, but they don't because of fears. Why? Well, the thing is about fear is that, that we are kind of taught to listen to it and always pay attention to fear. And that's really useful when you're a child and your parents want to make sure you don't put your hand in the fire. So, you know, that we have those fears. There's fear of being hurt. There's fear of, you know, different fears that we have. And those are what we call instinctual fears. They're the ones that tell you not to walk close to the cliff because you might fall over and die, which is a really good fear to have. The problem is, is that we mix those fears up with the fears that actually are just purely mind constructs and often are unfounded. But because we've heard stories about other people or because, you know, somebody said, oh, we went, you know, you don't want to do that, and, you know, taking a risk. And because we're, we're very much a risk-averse society nowadays, fears, those fears, stop us. And nobody tells us in our world at the moment to question fear. It's almost like as soon as a fear comes up, take notice, don't go down there. It puts up this huge do not enter sign. And I'm a great believer that fear is just telling you you haven't got enough information yet as to whether it's a good or a bad thing to do. And it's just a heads up, effectively, that need more information, need to find out what is and isn't possible, rather than a full stop. And I think a lot of people don't know that. Maybe you've never been even told that, that fear is not a bad thing. Now, there's the classic book that was written, gosh, it must be 30 years ago now, by Susan Jeffers called Feel the Fear, Fear and Do It Anyway. And it's a really, it's a great book title and it, it absolutely says the truth because we never get rid of fear. Fear is always there because there's always unknowns in our lives. And as we grow and as we expand and as we change our lives, fear will always come up. I still feel fear about the next thing that I'm about to do, but it doesn't stop me. It just makes me say, okay, get more prepared, find out more, so that you can feel comfortable about it. So fear is not a do not enter. I think that's a, the, a, the first thing that people need to realize. It's just about not enough information yet. need to find out more. Why is fear such an issue in the world right now? Well, I think particularly right now because of the whole economic crisis that we are living in, which I think is, is very much hyped up, you turn on the news and all you hear is things that are going to frighten you. You're going to hear about war, you're going to hear about countries defaulting on loans, you're going to hear about banks having problems, and, and, it, and it very much kind of feeds the fear. And it's... It stops us. It, we get caught up with it. I think that's part of the problem. And so when, particularly if you're thinking about changing your life, you know, you're trying to think positively, get new ideas, expand your life, go and do new things, while all the while there's the TV and the radio going, you know, fear, 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 don't do anything, don't change, don't change, don't change, hang on, close down, tighten up. But you see what we're doing is this. And nothing is going to shift and change. And life, ordinary life can't flow when we're doing this. I personally feel we've talked ourselves a lot into what's happening. I think, yes, there's a lot going on in the world, but I think we've made it much worse by how we've talked about it. And so I think right now, fear is very prevalent because every time you say to somebody, you know, oh, I'm thinking of changing, I'm going to change my job. You know, if that other person is in a space of fear, they're going to turn around and say, oh, do you really want to do that? You know, it's a bit risky because, you know, first one in, you know, last one in, first one out. And, and, and fear just gets perpetuated. So one of the things I say to people when they're changing their life, when they're working with me, is just keep it very close to your chest right now. You don't need to share this with hardly anyone 
you know, obviously your nearest and dearest, but you don't want to take on other people's fears because they're just thoughts. And often, if you just question them, there's a great process by a woman called Byron Katie. She has something called The Work, and she has four questions. And the first two questions, particularly if you're looking at something that you're frightened or your fear is coming up, first question is, is it true? And sometimes just asking yourself that question can make you go, actually, I don't even know if what I think could be fearful, is tr- I'm fearful about, is true. And her second question is, can you absolutely know that it's true? So I think just learning to question the fear is, it, is really good. And the other one I do is, is the reality check on fear. So somebody might be thinking of changing their job and moving to the country, for example. And then literally they kind of go, oh, I'll lose all my friends, I won't have any money, I'll never travel again, my life will be at an end. I mean, all this stuff comes cramming in. So I go, okay, let's just play that out, play that scenario out. Do you really, really believe that you won't have any friends? And what would happen if you didn't, if you left friends behind? What would happen? And they go, well, I'd move to the country and then I'd meet new people. And I just go, okay, so would you have friends? Well, yeah, okay. So look at it. So it's a matter of looking at, firstly, question it. But if, if that doesn't, if you still have it, if it's still got its hands, its grips into you, it's like, okay, play it out. Play out the worst case scenario and work out how would you deal with that. Because often, most of the things we're frightened of, if we actually did come across them, we would handle them. We just don't think we can, because we've never been there. And Jessica, tell me how rules and beliefs that we have growing up um, can hold us back. I think a lot of them. I think um, a lot of the work that I tend to do with women when I'm working with them is to look at those beliefs that we've taken on because we're like sponges when we're, when we're young, particularly when we're really young. You know, before the age of seven, we don't have rational thought. We don't think. We just soak it all in. So if somebody says, you know, somebody said to me, okay, this is a really great example. It's, it's not life-changing, but it's, it's a good example. When I was at school, I was doing about seven years old, I shall never forget taking, proudly going up to my art teacher and taking her this picture of a seagull that I painted. And she took one look at it and said, I wouldn't bother anymore, dear. Now, I never picked up a paintbrush after that, ever. Because I believed from that one experience that I didn't question it. I didn't, think, I didn't say to her, but look, I painted a wonderful seagull. You know, I just went, oh, okay, I'm no good at art. And it wasn't until I was living in the ashram, which was like 10 years ago, and then there was an art class, and I thought, well, I'm really bad at art, but I'm going to go along and have a go anyway. And I really got into it, and I started to do all these charcoal drawings, and they were incredible. And I thought, and I thought it was such an example of where we take on a belief, and we never question it. Until something comes along, and we do something and go, God, for the last... 35, 40 years, I believed I couldn't do that. And I think we have a lot of beliefs of what we are and are not capable of. And I think that stops a lot of us changing our lives. Um, it's, it's key. I mean, I've met many women who actually, one of the things they needed to do was leave the relationship they were in. But they didn't believe that they could cope with life single. And that's a huge belief that stops a lot of people going out and getting the life they want. And that, you can question that because it's just not true. Because a belief is just a thought that we've thought lots of times. And we've thought it so many times it's gone deep inside of us that we never question it anymore. So we look through this belief. It's like a rose-tinted glass, except it's not very rosy. And it's a, it's a, a belief is something that we don't even see when looking at the world through. So when you're looking to make major change in your life, for example, you might believe that you can't do it alone. I remember I had that belief until somebody said, you know, really made me question it and made me realize that actually I was perfectly capable of changing my life on my own. But those are the beliefs that we take on through experiences, through sometimes upsetting experiences which make us believe it even more, um, that really do stop us. So question all the beliefs that you think are stopping you going out 
and living the life that you want. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you so much for talking to me today. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure.